Hi friends, today I am playing with some perspectives on flowers. Uh, I had a few of you ask me and so I pulled out a little folder I had from years ago. Um, unfortunately, I never used to write down uh, where I got these from. Um, I'm sure I gathered them from all different uh, classes I've taken, books, and who knows what. But today I am using, so exciting, I got my new Artisto pads, and look at the beautiful new cover they have. I know that doesn't have anything to do with the quality of these pads, but I'm really, really liking these a lot. Um, I like change, so this is great. As you know, these Artisto pads, I'm not affiliated with them, but it's what I use. Um, I love the spirals, and they are the 140 pound cold press. And today, actually, I'm going to use my paper this direction, kind of horizontally, because I want to draw a few flowers and um, kind of share that with you. All right, let me find my, let's see here. Here we go. Uh, for some reason, I do not have my favorite pencil right here, darn it. Um, so, shoot, I really like my little black wing, pearl wing pencils not finding it. I'm going to just flip the camera around so you can see all my pieces that I typically have everything in. And you know, I was traveling and I think they might be in my travel bag. So the other exciting thing is I'm going to be today I've had a number of you tell me because as you know I always use my um, Miss Ceramics my custom palettes which I absolutely love they're my go-to they're light I travel with them I had a few of you tell me you really like the heavy-duty ceramic palettes and I found this one it's absolutely beautiful it is heavy um, Sometimes what I'll do is put the little rubber stoppers on the bottom, but I don't think this one is going to move around because it's quite heavy. The one thing I do like about it is it's got these really large um, mixing pans. So I do like that. Um, and I'll list the link to this in uh, my description below, but no, it is a little bit heavy. Um, and I wouldn't be able to travel with that. It's too heavy for that. Let's get started. And uh, I'm just today going to show you a few of the flower perspectives, kind of using these fun cosmos or just these wild flowers that I love so much. And I've showed you this technique before of drawing um, a circle and then kind of guidelines, and then you follow it with the petals. So we're going to just play with that again, um, and I'll show you a couple different perspectives. So the first one is really the easiest one. It's just face on. So let's, I wish I had my black wing pencil. I always have that here. Let's see, maybe I have it in here. No, okay, that's okay. We're gonna go ahead and kind of wing it here. But as you know, I love those pearl wing pencils because they have the thin replaceable uh, erasers. Today, I'm just gonna use my kneaded eraser. What I usually end up with is a bunch of pencils with no eraser, so I really like that black wing eraser. Okay, so the first one is going to be just face on. So I'm drawing my circle, and then I'm going to draw just a circle in the middle, like that, and drawing these guidelines. So I'm gonna do, most of the time, it seems like wildflowers have about five petals, but I'm gonna kind of wing it here. One, two, three, 
and that's probably good. So this is really the easiest. Let's see if how good this eraser works here. Excuse the camera shake. Yeah, that works good. Put that maybe in the middle. Okay. All right, so what we're going to do is use these as guidelines for where each petal is coming out. And this, for me, it keeps all my petals going in the right direction, which we want them all to be facing back towards the center of the flower. So I use this technique now for years and it's really been fail proof for me. So I'm going to come out with the first petal and always create kind of a roughly edge. We don't want all our flowers to be just perfectly round, right? And then I'm going to move on to the second one here. Just like that. And I'll move to my front petal. There we go. And this one. And our, see, I almost need an extra petal there. So let's do this. And one like that. So there you go. That's pretty easy. And you've got your little dabby doodads in the middle. And there you go. Then you would go in and of course, gosh, I miss my eraser. Just erase all your guidelines. And look how easy that was. Now, of course, this is the easy, easiest way to draw a flower is head on because there's no curling leaves, there's no folds. It's just your basic flower. And then these are just your little guidelines always coming from the center of the flower just like that so there we go now let's move on to maybe a side facing uh, flower which I draw a lot so I really like this I'm gonna do three for you so this is my next one I'm going since it's from the side I don't let me see if I have my poppy one second So I've used this before. If you're looking at your petals from the side, something like that, you're going to see these folds and then you're going to see the back petals, right? So that's kind of what I'm doing. And I think it's so great if you don't have real the real flowers, just buy these little from Michaels or something flowers and I use them all the time and I tilt the direction and it really gives me a good idea of what I'm looking at. So from this side, it's gonna be more of an kind of egg shaped or jelly bean shaped, something like this. Okay. And the center is going to be something like that. All right. So we want to use again those guidelines and we're going to use one, two, three, four. I have six here. Two, three, four. Well, we can use five, okay? So the front petal, because you're looking at it from the side, is most likely you're going to see that this, okay? So we're going to draw the bottom of the petal following these guidelines, and it's rounded, and then we're gonna come up like that. So if you can kind of see that perception, what I'm drawing is essentially this petal, okay? That's this right here. And then we're going to come out from the side 
and back down towards the center. So that's that side petal. And because it's still, you're looking at it from the side, you're going to see a little bit of the side of that petal. So draw that in there as well. Now come out with this petal right here and turn it back on itself. So you're seeing that lift that front of the petal. And then this guidelines somewhat already there. So you can just use that. And then this one here, like that. And we've got kind of this big petal in the back. So with these, you're seeing a little bit more of the front of the petal. It's turned in. We could even see a little bit of the fold on that one. And then drawing in our guidelines. And this one, because you're looking at the leaf flipped up, the lines are going to go like that. And these lines are really important because they're going to give the eye a little bit of perception of how they're looking. So all your lines coming back from the center. And let's just add in and then these are coming out this way. Okay. So does that make sense? And then what I would do, let's just, well, let me, let's finish drawing first. So we've got these petals, we've got these flipped over, we've got maybe our stem coming out like this, like that. And then the last one I wanna show you is one that I always thought was so fun. I took, I used to take pictures and I'd put my camera down underneath uh, the flowers looking upwards. And I used to say it was like an ant's perception and it came up with so many fun pictures. So this was my kind of perception of this flower. So looking up, like that. You're kind of looking up at the flower. And then let's just create those guidelines again. Let's see. There we go. And we will go with this one first, like that. like that, and that's where the flower is kind of turning in because you're seeing it from the side a little bit, like this, and like that, okay? And then usually if you're looking underneath, you're gonna see those little sepals something like that, and maybe just a rogue petal coming out here, something like that, sticking out the side of the petal. And there you go. So when I erase these lines, hopefully this little eraser works. It's working pretty good. Don't want to smear. Clean off my, there we go. So just erasing all those little guidelines. Something like that. And look at there. I wish I had those photos I could get too easy because they 
were so cool. Let's erase these guidelines. There we go, I think that's good. Use my brush to just wipe away. If you use your hand on pencil, it can get really smeary. So I think that's really fun. Um, I'm gonna fix this a little bit. Maybe add in one more petal here, like that. And then this one is kind of coming around the back side and curling around. I think that looks a little bit better. So again, the big thing too is to get these little lines correct because they kind of tell the eye what it's looking at. Something like that. Now the other thing I will do too, I'm at 16 minutes and I was hoping to keep this at 30, is let's just grab my brush. So I've got this fun brush I've had lately that I'm really loving. The Long Round Princeton Velvet Touch and it's a number six. So it's a little bit smaller than my eight. But what I'm gonna do is just go in and show you, I'm gonna paint the background here. So I'm going to grab uh, a little bit of my rose matter. This could also be, oh, maybe a Quinn Magenta and Opera Rose mixed together. And I'm going to get a really light value. So I'm adding more water to it, which just means it's probably maybe 70% water, 30% um, pigment. And I'm going to go into these back petals and start painting them with a very light wash. And then wash and rinse your brush and you just want it to be damp. And we're going to go in and just pull down that color, leaving some of that white space. You don't want it too much. Pick up some more paint. I'm going to do, ooh wee, that was way too much pigment. There we go. and wash and rinse my brush. Make sure you have your wash in your rinse container. And just pull that down to the base of the flower. Just like that. Okay, and then I've got a little bit right here. So I'll wash and rinse my brush, tap it off, and pull that, okay. When I do these front petals, they're turning upwards. So I'm gonna use this darker value, which just means a lot more pigment than water. So see how vibrant that is? If you need to test it out on a little piece of paper, you can do that. And I'm going to be careful, don't touch in if those inside areas are, see I just did, still wet. And let's just color that in. I'm just gonna wash and rinse my brush, tap it off, and pull that down, okay? So it looks like that is turning upwards. Pick up more pigment. Wash and rinse my brush and just pull it out a little bit. There we go. Isn't that beautiful? Oh, I love this. I mean, as you know, my Queen Magenta is my favorite color anyway. And then we just got this little lip here. Ooh, 
that's okay because they're the same color. There we go. I might just darken the end bottom there. And we've got a little bit of a lip here. So this number six brush is amazing for this. It does so well. Okay, in the middle, I'm gonna do a little ombre effect. So I'm going to go in with my Cad Yellow. Let's just make that a little bit lighter value. And by the way, I'm really loving this palette because um, there is quite a large area to work with. All right, so I'm gonna go in here and I'm just gonna paint in this center, being careful not to touch anything that's wet. And then wash and rinse my brush, go in and I'm going to grab, let's grab, oh, that's a little bit dark. Yeah, I like the, raw umber it has a little bit of red in it and I'm just gonna touch in here just like that look how beautiful that is oh my gosh you guys I'm loving this and we'll do our green stem which if you follow me you know I always use sap green and you can add in a little bit of olive green if you want and let's just use the point of this wonderful six long round brush. And guys, I never thought I would deviate from my, um, my number eight, but wow, I'm really enjoying this. I can get some really fine lines. Okay, so there you go. Now on this one, let's just go ahead and paint that one real quick. This one would basically be all this light color because you don't have any turned leaves but let's play with this one a little bit. So we'll go in, use that value that I already have, and I'm gonna go from the bottom up this time. So I'm going in with quite a dark value, okay? And wash and rinse my brush. Where did I put my napkin? You just want it to be damp, and I'm going to do that push-pull technique that you've seen me do so many times. It's really my go-to. It's my main way to feather out. So I'm just going in and pulling this upwards. Oops, went into that. Didn't want to do that. So I'm going to wash and rinse my brush again, tap it off and feather again, just bringing that upwards, just like that. Look how pretty that is. And you can just encourage some more of that to move up if you want. There you go, okay? So I'm gonna do every petal like that. Let's go ahead. I'm not gonna do the one right next to this one. I'm gonna go to the one next to that and then maybe this right here. Don't want to get those sepals. Wash and rinse my brush and feather it out. So that push and that pull, sorry, I know the camera's shaking. Wash and rinse my brush again and just repeat that feathering it out. And now you can certainly pull out some of those to get the, the lines. So now let's do this one, wash, rinse, feather it out. And maybe just pull some of those upwards like that. Let's go ahead and try and do this one. Let me grab a little bit more pigment. And let's see. I'm gonna darken this one just a bit. Because I want there to be, a, I'm gonna do this back pedal light. 
So I want there to be a little bit of variation there. Yeah, I'm real I think you guys will really like this six round long round they call it. I'll I'll link it for you. And no, I'm not affiliated with them either, but I wish I was. Okay. So, wash rinse, lighten that up a bit. Just to feather it out and then you can pull some of those upwards. Just like that so I'm leaving some white space in there our last one is right here going between those sepals wash and rinse my brush I'm gonna pick some of this up by the way really quick there we go kind of wanted that to be a little highlighted so to lift some paint I just dried my brush and lifted that a bit but let's do this before it dries. So wash, rinse my brush, feather it out, and pull it up. So there you go, look how beautiful that is. And then we've got these two little funky ones here. Same thing, wash, rinse my brush, and just coax it on out very lightly with the tip. Okay, now let's go ahead and go in and do those fun little sepals. So I'll pick up that same green. There we go. Look how fun that is. I might add in a tiny bit of dark green in there, just to get some variation and pull it down. All right, isn't that beautiful? So I'm not gonna do this last one, but I do wanna do because it's going to sh get you to see how this is the inside of the petal because I'm going to go in with a very light value. So again, add a lot of water to this and just go in Wash and rinse your brush and pull it down. And there you go. Look at how beautiful those are. So practice these. We can do this one just the same way, but this would be all like this. There would be no really darker except for maybe in the middle. And I think this is dry now, so I might even go in and add in some little dots here and there, kind of give it some dimension. And there you go, those are very simple. You could always go in with a dark value and pull out a few of these little lines if you wanted. I'm not a real detail person, although I've been having a lot of fun with this brush. Maybe add in some here, and these are just really little flicks of the wrist. Like that. It's up to you if you want to add these in. I don't a lot of times, but there you go. All right, everybody, I hope that helped you out. Um, and have fun with this. Practice these. Practice drawing these. I think... Um, they're really beneficial in helping you get a perspective on your flowers and, and uh, your ability to kind of see what's going on. Use this circle method. Um, I think it's really helpful. It saved me years ago. All right, everybody, have fun with this. And this palette, I'm loving. You're going to see me use it a little bit more. I will link it. I love, love, love it, actually. I love the big working space. As you can see, look at all that. I've got a ton of space to mix colors in, um, so I do really like that. I run out a lot of times on my custom palette, um, but I love that one. All right, happy painting, everyone. I have my um, P 
peony class coming up next Tuesday. I have a couple seats left in there if you'd like to join me. I can link that in the description if you like. I'd love to see you. I keep it only to a maximum of five, so I get a lot of engagement. Um, and I've got three seats left. So if you'd like to join us, uh, let me know. I'd love to see you there. It's via Zoom, by the way. All right, everybody. I hope you're having fun with this, and I will see you soon. Bye-bye.